Welcome to another edition of uh, Pulp Nonfiction on Pure Effects. Today I have with me a fellow in Adonis, Paula Elmi. And Paula, you um, did your dental degree at Harvard and your endo degree at Tufts and then uh, wanted to get some sunshine again and uh, moved to sunny California. And um, we're just about to hit, open your office and a virus hit. And I'm not talking about computers either, right? Not computers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you poor thing. So we'll we'll chat a little bit about that, but then you're going to show us today an interesting case that you've uh, come across and, and 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 treated. Is that right? That's right, Joel. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, no, it was lo lovely to have a a fellow on 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 the program and talking about the best part of it, uh, best part of dentistry. Endo. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So yeah. Uh, a little bit about me, like like Joel said, mm -hmm. you know, I did my I did six cold years in Boston, and uh, just as just as soon as it was getting cold again, September two thousand six, I headed my way back here, and I've been practicing, you know, full time mm -hmm. clinical endodontics ever since. Uh, and along the way, sometimes as as you know, sometimes we come across some fun cases. So what I'm going to show mm -hmm. today is uh, is a fused supernumerary. It was actually a a fused second molar, mandibular second molar with a fused supernumerary tooth and just the canal system. So I have uh, some CBCT slices and just uh, to show, so it's, it's a fun case. Oh, that's excellent. And, and in your new office, you have a CBCT. Yeah, so it's, we're not totally up and running, but we will have a, you know, the nice full uh, CBCT, my favorite brand, Jay Marita. I don't know why I'm talking about the brands, but I really love that one. Yeah. That's the slices off the one that I'm showing are gonna be also from a Jay Marita, so. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I actually have a question about Jay Maria when we're done. All right. Um, yeah. I got to be uh, zoom in, zoom out. But anyway, it, it's boring for everyone else, but interesting for me. Okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so, oh yeah, I got to make you uh, a host so you can um, share your screen. Uh, okay. Allow recording. Wow. Sorry about this. Make host. There we go. All right. There we go. So yeah, so, so we'll be able to share the screen now and, and share the images of this most interesting case. Perfect. Okay, so let me just get this up and going. Let's see. Tell me, is it showing as a, oops, is it showing as a presentation? Uh, no. Yes. Okay, perfect. So basically, like, as I said, tooth number 31 with the fused supernumerary mm -hmm. tooth. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the patient presented, he was a 24-year-old. A uh, young man. He had been. I saw him July 2016. Let me just get my notes up here. And um, he had he had previously had severe pain. So back in April of 2016, he saw his, his GP. He had had a recent restoration done. Um, severe pain. So GP put him on a course of uh, uh, antibiotics, and that subsided a bit. But from there, it went into cold sensitivity for a while. So through May, he experienced cold sensitivity, and uh, and then it started, you know, having some felt pain to chewing on harder food, foods by mid-June, he just felt the tooth was dead. So um, it was at that point that uh, lucency developed and they, they sent him over. So this was what, what he presented with. We, we took a few, you know, angle shots. And at that point, we don't, so in, in, in the practice, we don't always take a CBCT on every single uh -huh. uh, patient that comes through, uh, always on upper maxillary teeth, uh, any retreatments and and then and then something that maybe looks a little bit you know if it something looks a little more unusual we'll we'll go for it so with this case um, we we went in for the CBCT scan and so this is just showing as I was mentioning the the interface kind of just shows everything at once but mm -hmm. I, I'll go into the to the different slices here um, we can see you know definitely very defined radial lucency around you know me the mesial and distal roots of 31. And then when I scoot it over, we can see the end of, of that supernumerary part of the tooth there. Yes. Oh, very skinny and, and challenging. <laughs> very skinny and challenging. But does my little arrow show up here? No. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. yes, yes. So arrow, basically, yes. so here's the buccal area. So this is the, the supernumerary tooth. We can see the, mm -hmm. this main, you know, nice large canal system. And we can see that this guy is, is kind of coming in this way as well. Mm. So I, I'm like, I knew there was going to be communication there. And so, um, and then as well, we can see how, how, how things kind of, you know, joined up from the axial. But so I got into the tooth 
you know, this is after, I don't have extra or photographs all along the way, but this was after accessing. Um, I didn't need mm -hmm. to, I, I wanted to keep it, try to keep it conservative, you know, so uh, made the access into the tooth number 31, made a little access into, into the little supernumerary tooth. Mm -hmm. Did, um, I go through like, so enhanced irrigation, I, I like to, I like to enhance it up as much as possible. So, you know, used a photo -induced photo, uh, photon induced photo acoustic streaming, which is a laser style of enhanced irrigation. Also endovac, you know, suctioning through, seeing, making sure that we're getting as much, uh, you know, communication as possible between, between all those canals and everything. And, and um, yeah. the rubber dam isolation um, adjunct, the, the little white stuff. Yes. So yeah. I use, I always use some kind of block out. So I'll use uh, the, a few, I, that looks like, um, that looks like fast dam, I believe, but I use that or cool dam. Those are the two, you know, that I've mm -hmm. used the most. They have a little bit more flexibility than say using a, a straight, uh, um, some of the block out resins are a little bit tough and I, I, mm -hmm. they're harder to take off. So, uh, but a lot of those, a lot of those rubber dam or, or liquid dam type products work really well. I used to use a uh, aura seal all the yeah. time. And funny yeah. enough, I, uh, our one time or seal wasn't available. So one of our reps brought by uh, something else like a cool dam. I didn't want to try it. I was like, no, I like my aura seal. But after I tried it, I have not gone back. This is, it makes such a nice, nice seal. And you know, you can get around everything. Although it looks like my seal could have been a little, a little better in spots, but, um, so, uh, I did a two visit on him. I did a uh -huh. calcium, I did calcium hydroxide, uh, and let that, let that stay in for the tooth for two, three weeks or so. Had him back. You know, he was asymptomatic. Um, all good. We we did, you know, here's cone fit, just shift shot, some more x-rays, but uh, just wanted to make sure we, we got everything. And then here's, I have two of the final x-rays. So shifted shot and then a straight shot. So, you know, again, on these, on these more straight shots, it doesn't really look like there's much going on with this tooth. Yeah. But, but when you when you shift, that's that's just kind of also showing the importance of how we get these shift shots, especially when we don't have three use of three D. You know, yeah. I always like to teach that uh, it, when I'm mentoring any 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 dentist. You know, make sure you get those shifted shots in there. So, yeah. Now, um, when when you uh, medicated it uh, and you instrumented it uh, to length and size, roughly, mm -hmm. is that normally what you do when you do a pulpectomy? Yeah, I usually actually I, I I it's almost as if we could fill that day, you know. Yeah. So generally, I will do so. Uh, it kind of always try to do a little apical gauging, but I'd say for the most part, I usually go up to about a you know thirty on you know smaller mesials and thirty five distal. But would mm -hmm. be you know kind of average starting point when we go from there. And then and then uh, that photo you did um, that was after your irrigation with the um, endovac. Is that right? Yeah, and actually, the reason why I left the I left the liquid in the chambers is just so you can get a better view of the floor mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise it was kind of cutting it off and you couldn't see all the canals at the same time. So, so mm. that basically that actually is with uh, probably some sodium in the in the chambers there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the lack of bubbles is a good sign. Yeah, it it's was. I know, and I still did, but I still did the calcium because that's yeah. just I just wanted to make sure with him. Uh, you know, larger lesion and everything too. So, yeah, yeah. And then so, um, you you don't have a hard and fast rule. Everything's two. Everything's one. I don't. I would say I probably lean towards one more often. Mm -hmm. But if there's uh, there's oozing, if there's you know symptoms, larger lesions, I'll I I generally will go to two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then um, he went back, uh, and and you can see on the floor. I always I always lay a coronal seal. So even if mm -hmm. I'm not asked to do the buildup or the access filling out, I always do not just an orifice seal, but usually the, the whole floor of the chamber. So actually right. on, on this tooth, I did fill completely on, on the supernumerary tooth because although it doesn't show as much, that was, yeah. it was kind of a small access. And what I don't want to do is set someone up where they're going to have to open up and remove more tooth structure because it's small and mm -hmm. getting a burn there to make sure you get everything. So I, I sealed that one myself, and then I put the uh, I put the flow it flowable composite mm -hmm. on the floor here. I always like to do that with a a very uh, a contrasting type. I used to use a, a more of a purple type one, but what I mm -hmm. found out 
is that if you try to go back into, like if you don't have really good light, like a microscope light, and you're trying to get into that axis later and there's a dark floor with a purple, sometimes it's very difficult to see down there. So I use a bright white, uh, like an opaque paper white, nice contrast. Ah. Type. And it's much, it's much easier to see. I, I had a, actually had a case that had gone back with the purple composite that um, the GP, when trying to take out the stuff had accidentally perforated and, and I was like, oh no, that, that's not good. So when I had gone back in myself later and I kind of looked without the microscope and I'm like, it just makes it look like a dark hole in there. You can't, you can't see anything. So that's when I, when I went to the nice, nice bright white and you see everything, you know, you know, it's clean. I even, even when I'm going to do the buildup, I like to do a contrasting on the floor because if that tooth ever has to be gone back into again, you'll know whoever's in there knows this is, we're at the floor. There's, there's this contrasting composite down here. So no one know. ever has to go into a I again. know, I know, Come not on. mine at least, right? <laughs> or yours either. No, of course not. All I but can say, when I have had to go back to my own and I've been really pleased that it's there, so. Yeah, well, that's, that's good to know because um, I'm purple, purple guy. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was all the way. I, for years, I, that's all I did, you know, yeah. I wasn't placing the buildup. So that was, that, that changed. I, maybe five years ago. Okay. So uh, what is the white that you use? It's a it's Pentron product, uh, uh -huh. and it's a flow it white, opacious white. Okay. And they have that both in their flow it, which is a flowable composite, and also in their, um, in their dual cure um, product, the build it. So build up material and the opaque okay. white. So even when I'm doing build ups as well for someone, I will like, to, I like, it's so that they can see clean margins. They know what's tooth structure and what's not. Um, the restorative dentists I work with really appreciate when I do that so that they can see I'm cutting on a margin or I'm cutting on composite or not. It's, it's very, you know, again, nice and contrasting. And it doesn't, doesn't show through, like, you know, if you're using a darker composite. I used to do the blue. There was like a, a beautiful mm -hmm. Smurf blue color. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so on the more aesthetic restorations, maybe not so good, but the opaque white's great. Yeah, yeah, I would use a variety of different whites at you know, uh, for any of the first premolars forward. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're using super white, then you don't need any purple at all. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's good to know. That's, that's excellent. Uh, yeah, I, then, I, didn't, I didn't realize it because you're always looking underneath the sculpture. You're like, wow. Oh, yeah, we see everything. See. Purple is very easy to see. Yeah. It is very easy to see. And you take off, take off the light and it just it turns it into a little bit of a dark cavern down there. Oh, no. Yeah. So we uh, got him back uh, a little over a year later and, uh, you know, decent healing and everything and restoration. That's a very, I know it's a very awkward shift shot, but, you know, just always liking to get multiple angles. So Yeah. Now did that um, mesial buckle unite with, um, I'm trying to remember, they just came really close. So the mesial buckle did actually. So it was actually, it joined pretty high up and then, uh -huh. and then the ML was all on its own. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and he, what I didn't mention too is that, um, so there was that, um, you know, the lesion that was developing and also there was like a six millimeter pocket along the fusion point. And uh -huh. when he came back later, that had resolved a bit. I think it was like three, you know, maybe four millimeters. So it was, uh, eight, wow. Eight. so that was a overall worked out very well. Yeah. Cause that six millimeter pocket, a lot of people would say that's four steps in sunshine time. Yeah. You know? um, and and sometimes it is, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, it's those mm -hmm. teeth that have the grooves like that where uh, like a biofilm can form along it. Sometimes those are just non healers, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but well, he, he had, he had youth on his side too, you know, he's 24. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow. And, and, um, the crown margins, um, that must've been a unique crown prep. Yeah. You know, I wish I would have, I, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry that I don't have clinical photos yeah. on his, uh, return visit. Uh huh. But um, yeah, so this is uh, six months or a year later. That was a that was about a year later, if I remember okay. correctly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a case where you definitely could not um, separate them, especially with that mesial buccal canal joining. It was just uh, a nightmare. So it's either XO or save. Mm hmm Oh. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. That would have been interesting, and and. What I think originally had happened on that one too, if I go back to here, I bet that, you know, with that, this is the, the supernumerary part. 
I think uh -huh. the restoration just had gotten very close to that pulp because I think that pulp in that particular, kind of like almost like, you know, like a talon tooth type style thing, the, uh, the pulp chamber and the pulp horn was pretty high there. So. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I believe that's where the, uh, you know, his entry point was. Yeah. The trouble all began mm -hmm. there. And that's a difficult, yeah, difficult area to keep clean and quite prominent. So yeah. It will, yeah, for him to prevent cavities from developing. And wow, kudos to the dentist for not just whipping it up. This is weird. We got to get it out of here. Yeah, he was great. Uh, He's a great dentist. So they're trying to save stuff. And so that was a fun, yeah. So that was a fun case. And, and the contralateral side's normal and the other Totally one, normal, yeah. Yeah, uh, so unilateral abnormality and yeah, he's healed up well. and. Yeah, so, and, and the instrumentation of the canals, like um, the cone beam beforehand gives you a lot of information, so you kind of knew so, where you stood, eh? Absolutely, the yeah. Canals. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, huh. okay. And, the, and then the wisdom tooth is not an issue. You know, <laughs> at this point, you know, uh, it, it wasn't. And, yeah. I, you know, again, I don't have it without the rubber dam, but I don't, I don't think it, it wasn't an issue yet. I think there was there were plans for it uh -huh. to come out, um, and on the final, yeah, it's still still there. So yeah, still there, and still there. Yeah. So, huh? So in in the history, um, he started off with antibiotics. Yes. Um, and then they they finished, and then he had some cold sensitivity. Yeah. So since that was before the time that I, you know, I, I didn't yeah. see him till July, that was back in April. So he was having severe pain and he was given a course of antibiotics for the severe pain. And mm -hmm. then, and then he noticed the cold sensitivity, which also makes me wonder, you know, did, did that supernumerary part start going down first and then you were having the mm -hmm. pulpitis in the, in the other part of the tooth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I find too is, um, when they get swelling and they get pain, then all of a sudden their attention's drawn to that area, and then they're saying, "I got cold sensitivity," and it's because their attention's there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and it's just like they're so focused on that area, and you're like, well, actually, I mean, cold sensitivity is just your normal throughout the teeth. But you know, in a, in a nice way, I kind of explained to them. I said, "Well, everything's wound up, so you're getting extra that's strong true. responses, and that's why you're noticing cold sensitivity." But my treatment today isn't particularly going to. Do anything about your cold sensitivity because you know we can put a little torch on this tooth and you're not going to feel it but uh yeah your, your other one's a little bit sensitive because that's sometimes a bit a bit of a tough one because if if you wanted to be cynical you said well you know you didn't need antibiotics if you had cold sensitivity well, well hang on a minute nothing's you know you can't diagnose over the phone but i often find that the cold sensitivity um is just because they're 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 psychologically tuned into that area and then you ask him, is that cold sensitivity, you know, the, the lingering brain freeze, kill me now pain, or was it sensitive? And often it's sensitive. You're like, well, okay, that could have been you know, just uh, heightened attention to the area. Yeah, and also, and to your point, though, that, you know, heightened attention and number two, like when there's an inflammation of any sort, you can have, you know, enhanced inflammation that's affecting this tooth and the surrounding tooth, they will get amped up a little bit mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as well. I mean, I've had some cases where, I was sure like, you know, someone needed two root canals and this is like, uh, luckily this happened earlier in, in my, uh, <laughs> earlier in my career where it's like, I don't have time to do both of these at the same time. So then I, I would, I only actually would go into one of them or instead of like, well, let's start both. And I, I remember, I mean, very specifically doing cold testing, two teeth were really bad. One was a little bit worse. It's like, let's start with this one. Yeah. The person came back a few weeks later for the other one. And um, they're like, yeah, it's not as bad. And, and I'm like, oh, it's probably just dead at this point. And it's perfectly normal. So it really yeah. had just been heightened during that time. So I do like to, you know, re always just do a quick retesting if someone's coming back to you, you know. Yeah, no, um, I'd say that happened to me earlier in the week, but it's only Monday. But yes, yeah. it does happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens to us all. You're like, yeah, you definitely need to, but we're going to get the smoking gun right now. And this is a real yeah. bad one. And then sure enough, some, you know, not every time, but they come back and the other one's 
fine. It's much not bad better. At all. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad it happened earlier in my career where I wouldn't have thought just to jump into both because yeah. having seen that enough that like, you know, let's start with a really bad one because it's kind of like 50, 50, this one might, this one might get better. We can recheck it, but you know, mm-hmm. otherwise we do them both. Now you need to do two crowns. You, you know, we can't just, you know, get in there and, and then say, whoops, actually it's pretty good in there. If you see it bleeding and no one else does, it might not be bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> yeah. The tree falls in a forest and does anyone hear it or something, isn't that? <laughs> it's something along with yeah. Um, yeah, well, actually, and, and speaking to that, I've um, I've had the case, too, where if I've diagnosed irreversible pitis on, on a tooth. Symptomatic apical paradontitis, like, oh, this is a sensitive tooth. You know, when you do the cold test and, oh, it's aching, it's throbbing, it's horrible. And then you don't see the patients for six months. And we kind of have a rule. Uh, they have, if I haven't seen them in three months, then I'm definitely going to test the tooth again. Yeah. And a couple times, it's like, that tooth is totally normal. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, I was going through a bad part of my life right then. You know, some relative died or something this, something that. And yeah. they weren't themselves. And I, I um, either I'm really bad at testing pulp or, um, you know, and, and then you're like, you're actually totally normal. So a word of caution is um if someone goes away and they had that you know let that nightmare toothache like i want to be in tomorrow and then they don't come for six months or uh, an extended period double check it because um once in a blue moon it's like your tooth is totally normal what was all that song and dance before and then you're looking at your notes and you're thinking who is that idiot and you're like oh, it was me <laughs> yeah but it's if that that happens and that's and it's it's great to bring that up and i'm i'm kind of just really on the conservative test test diagnose like i'm all about diagnose everything when i when i'm teaching it's just like i you know you gotta minimally you're testing anything that you know has some kind of like just you know in a say even in a general office to do endodontic testing do it on anything that someone's having some discomfort you know you would definitely want to do cold testing minimally or ideally it's like you're doing it on any any tooth that's going to have a full coverage restoration right if you're going to if get you want to know what you're dealing with before you're going into there you should get a baseline and, and it doesn't take long that's, the, that's part of the things like if you're set up to do it you could just do that you know and quick quick you know still alive good because i don't know how many times um and i'm sure you have as well like someone gets a new crown they come in and there's uh, apical lesions on the tooth and then um the patient's like well it was fine. It was fine before the crown. And it, you know, it might've been fine, but if there was only a bite wing taken and didn't see that there was something going on down there and do a little testing, you know? So, oh, yes. yeah. and uh, so endo testing could be quick and easy and not, not too uh, horrible for the patient, but just good, good to know. I always think about it's just like the foundation for the house. You always want to know what you're building on. You know, absolutely. Um, it's a billable procedure up here that's covered by insurance. Is that the same in the U.S. Endo testing? Not that I know of, but uh. you know, I I gotta be you know honest. I, I we I'm in a network with one insurance and mm. mostly fee for service. So uh, I mm. but I I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, we we have a code for it. It's um, so anyway. So yeah. there's that aspect of it. Is I mean, the, the, you you can't bill for it. It is is not you know. Um, seen as crazy but and and when you're doing a crown and so someone's investing you know i don't know it's crown thousand dollars or sixteen hundred dollars whatever it may be you want to protect that investment it it kind of behooves uh everyone involved to invest on well what's the pulp status uh before you do it um because um you like yourself um i've seen patients who are mad at their dentist now because now the tooth is sensitive beforehand well if you did that pulp testing before it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win every fight and avoid every trouble but at least the patient saw you go through the motions you got the chart and well, your pulp status was good before we did the crown prep that doesn't necessarily mean my crown prep was bad but we knew at least the crown was not sensitive beforehand so i didn't miss something beforehand yeah, yeah you know and and, and then uh, the patients see you go through that they're a little more understandable and um you know it's a bit cya cover your backside if if you know, um, the regulatory bodies or lawyers starts asking questions like, well, I did my stuff beforehand. So enough beforehand. And then it responded poorly. So that things can respond poorly, but if you don't know anything beforehand, yeah. then you don't have this firm foundation, you know, and, and then bad things happen. But, uh, the more pre-op information you have, the, the safer you are when, um, 
the fingers start getting pointed at people. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you reviewed um, cases for lawyers or regulatory I have, bodies? I have. I have not. No. Okay. Yeah, I I have, and honestly, if uh, if um, you know people would just put down a diagnosis and a couple notes of, of their exams and, and, and just, you know, something that it makes a world of a difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So yeah, this one was pretty um, straightforward diagnostically, technically very challenging. Um, and I can see why you would do it in, in, in two appointments. Were you surprised with anything when you were treating this tooth? No, it was actually, it was, uh, it, it was not bad, you know, inside it was, you know, carotid pulp, everything was, it was pretty straightforward and, and mostly, uh, and, and great patient, you know, mm -hmm. very, very understanding. Some people don't want to come back for two visits. You know, he, he understood we had worked on another tooth with him as well. And, you know, he just wanted stuff done correctly, done right. And, and making sure that he wasn't, you know, that it was going to be good for the long run. So yeah. that's always helpful as well. Cause some people just are done, maybe not as understanding and like, I, I don't want to be here and I never want to come back. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we do get that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, he was, he was fine with that, but yeah, I, I usually find if you, you say a patient like, um, you know, like I, if I can do it in one for you and be happy and proud of it, I will. But if, if I got any EBGBs about it, then I'll, I, you know, I'll do it in two and it doesn't cost you more if I do it in two. It Absolutely. usually kind of, that kind yeah. of sells it. So they it know, them. exactly. They know that you're not just trying to get them in there for more visits, more money. And I always just tell people like, I'm, I'm going to do for you what I would do for what I want for someone to do for me or for my family members. Like that's how, that's how we're going to treat this. And so, and that usually, you know, I yeah, that, that generally works as well. If it was a mother-in-law, it's out. <laughs> it's my mother, I'm going to try to save it. Or vice versa, depending on your take on things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, so um, the gut, uh, that, that's quite got the little hook there on the, on the one there, right? Eh? Yeah, that was a fun little, it, it, you know, it went. So, I can't say this is the most beautiful looking case. I mean, that's another thing too, because I was like, I'm like, it's not the most sexy looking. When you look at the the scan or this curve, the ship shop, then it's a little bit more fun. But it was yeah. actually pretty straightforward. And then that little, the ML had that little, a little foot at the end. You know that we all know yes. the little little Smurf foot. I, yeah. I, apparently, I like Smurfs, Smurf blue <laughs> and Smurf feet, uh, mandibular teeth. Yeah, yeah. But that that when you're treating it, and if you don't have the cone beam. And even if you did have the cone beam, you might miss that subtle and that anatomical change. And if you're instrumenting with your hand files, your hand file comes out a little bent or a little bit stretched or a little elongated. And you think, oh, I just hit a wall. I need to go in there with the next hand file a little stronger and a little straighter. Um, you're going you're gonna to miss the subtleties, which you managed not to miss on this case. You managed to capture them and, and didn't um, kind of barrel it out and have a nice straight canal there with a little oh look it's a it's a it's an apical delta it's like <laughs> yeah. that's not an apical delta that's a <laughs> transportation and you got sealer in the true anatomy yeah yeah right? so it's and fine then, i mean i love these uh, like the the little hand files are my eyes too you know mm -hmm. it's like you always start with something small and then what does it look like I, I take that take that file out what am i looking at and that just gives you so much information you know mm -hmm. um i would say just even with uh I use, I usually use heat treated files. So, you know, mostly um, something, uh, I use a lot of edge files, you know, mm -hmm. fire wire type, type files. Um, but I would say that changed the way I practiced a lot because I used to hand file up to a much larger size before. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying, it's like, just get the next, you know, bigger size and, and a lot more jamming would go on because there was just a lot more work to that. So, and, and I noticed, you know, I, I did straighten out a whole lot of anatomy, you know, doing that hand filing up to a 25 before I'd put a rotary file in and, you know, generally, you know, 10, 15 file and, and then I'm putting some kind of rotary down there. Yeah. It's a working length and then, and then, and then rotary. Yeah. No, I, I, I do know some of the manufacturers like saying, all you need to do is get done with a 10 and then go to the rotary. I, I still like to get to a 15 mm -hmm. unless it's obviously. Yes. Yeah. Um, challenging and then you're a bit gun shy with a 15 even sometimes 
Yeah, and so did you have a pile of little hand files? Did this this one eat some no, files? No, I don't. I don't remember this one uh, eating a whole lot of. I mean, this is a few years back now, but it was uh, like I said, it was actually pretty. It was pretty straightforward. It was mostly um, what I do remember doing with this one a lot is I have fun, you know, using and even if I'm not using like say an endovac, I'll use some kind of you know suction irrigation like that and just mm -hmm. be irrigating and suctioning out just to get a little of that you know watching watching mm -hmm. the irrigation go through and. And like I said, I did use the tips on this one as well, but I'm, I'm constantly just exchanging irrigation in these teeth like that. There's especially when there's a lot of communication like that. And, and what are your irrigants of choice? So, I mean, generally uh, I'm using a you know, full strength uh, sodium hypochlorite. So 6%, you know, mm -hmm. five and a quarter to 6%, depending on the, on the formulation. Um, I use a, I usually will use a, a the Smiroff type, um, is it Smiroff? I believe it's Vista Smiroff. And that's the, you know, the chlorhexidine EDTA hybrid. Yeah. I think that that stuff is so nice and slippery. I was talking about like if, if, if this case, that, which this was not like a calcified case or anything, but for calcified cases, that, that stuff is kind of magical. It really helps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. And, and, uh, there's no manufacturer sponsor this presentation, so do you do you reuse your rotary files? Uh, it depends. It yeah. depends. So honestly, it really depends. Um, mm -hmm. I will um, it, it, sometimes I'll use sometimes I will use three or four like of the same file in one tooth and throw them out. So if that's what a tooth mm -hmm. takes, that's what it takes. And if it's you know if it's a straightforward file and it's uh, and the file hasn't been you know. It, there wasn't much, uh, much, you know, stress is put on the file, then I'll definitely use it. I would say, especially my larger gauge files, you know, like if my thirties and 40 rotary files, those ones, uh, and, and particularly since I use the, the heat treated files, you see them unwind and stuff. So you, you know, you're, you're watching them and you know, if they start, if they start getting ugly, I toss them. So on the smaller files, you know, maybe I'll use them once or twice, but the thirties and forties, those, those get used more, more often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it's, and again, in a calcified case, you know, it would be like all, all, you know, we want to use all brand new files. And again, you know, you might go through, but like you said, not only hand files will there be a pile of hand files, but sometimes also a pile of rotary files. Ah, and um, an interesting thing uh, a, a dental rep brought up to me once is everyone's talking about the price of rotary files mm -hmm. and people have forgotten the price of hand files. And so a lot of the big companies are, are kind of uh, uh, lost leaders or rotary files and they're, and they're hitting their customers with the cost of the hand files because yeah. everyone's focused in on the cost of rotary files. That's funny. You know, the brand that I use really is a pretty stable in price. It yeah. is not one of the big guys files and yeah. uh, I love it. I don't, I, you know, I don't want to say which files I don't like necessarily, but, um, I do love Manny files, hand files. Mm -hmm. like those are mm -hmm. absolutely hands down my favorite file. Yeah. But just, just a, a word out there to the, to the Good dental to world is yeah, it does work. It is worth looking at the cost of that hand files because, um, the companies have sort of figured it out. Um, everyone's focused on the cost of the rotary file and, and people have forgotten the cost of the hand file because cost of the hand file is a bit, it's seen as a bit of a commodity. The hand file, the hand file is a hand file. Um, and those actually, they really go across the board. You could, a, a hand file, I think a, you can get a very like quality hand file, very quality can be a third quarter of the price of mm -hmm. a equal quality hand file. So to what you're saying, that is very important to look. Um, another yeah. thing, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but myself and some of my colleagues, there are mm -hmm. certain files, and I don't know what the, I mean, they're supposed to be stainless steel, but the composition, or I don't know if it's because there's markers of the, the I don't think it's just the markings on the, on the, on the hand file, but the Apex Loadicator sometimes is not as reliable with certain brands of hand files. That's what uh -huh. I noticed, and that's actually when I went to, you know, the Manny files, which I, which I love, and yeah. So to tell everyone about those are for me so consistent with yeah. the apex locator too so yeah. i would say if someone's having a hard time or if they notice like they're not feeling they're getting consistency because i you know I've, I've definitely mentored some people who are just not comfortable with apex locators and they just don't find that it's super consistent 
something that you might be w- worth looking into is change up your hand file and see if that makes any difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never, I not come across that noticeably that you mentioned it, but that is definitely worth, worth um, checking out. Yeah. And so, yeah, all hand files are not created equally and everyone's focused on the rotary files, but it is worth now, you know, Oh, wait a minute. What, what, what am I paying for hand files? And what am I getting? And, you know, wow. just, you love the many hand files and they're great hand files. And yeah, it's, it's worth, it's worth playing with the hand files a little bit because the rotary file can't go anywhere a hand file went. And rotary files are great and they're getting better all the time. But um, yep. I think it's a bit of a blind spot in dentistry the last few years is the hand files because everyone's been so enamored with the changes and developments in the rotary files. Yeah, so a little inside scoop there. That's great. That's great to know. Yeah, yeah. And so um, you also do a hands on course. Uh, I do. It's a, a, a little different. Well, I shouldn't say it's a little different. It's probably, I mean, I think covers the basics and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, different in that um, I've done it where I've taken it to people's offices, you know, mm-hmm. so it's not necessarily a come to me thing. I've, I've done it sometimes, smaller group, you know, no more than uh, on the big side, no more than five or six people, but also one on one. So some people have opted that they want to have a, you know, one-on-one experience so it's really can be tailored and customized and you know depends on the person like for uh, for one of the you know docs I worked with it was like boot camp where it was just like they wanted they wanted it boot camp style and it was just okay access tooth after tooth after you know like so it it really that way we can kind of customize it and it's Mm -hmm. and it's fun and a lot of that came out of um you might not know from the way I'm interacting with you, but I'm kind of a bit of an introvert and I do prefer smaller groups myself and one-on-one. And so uh, I just wanted to be able to create that experience for people as well. I just think you're more cutting edge than you give yourself credit for. You were social isolating or being, you, you were knowing the group <laughs> dynamics before that became a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you'd be packed out stadium. All right, Paul, uh, Elmie, uh, Endo. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's, it, and the smaller groups doesn't make a big difference, uh, makes a massive difference because then you're getting more time and, mm-hmm. and, and, cause I've been in those endo, um, so, you know, before I got into endo, I, you know, I was an endo nerd going to all those different courses and, and you'd sign up to these courses and it was like one or two instructors and 40, 50 people. And is, you know, like, you know, you feel like you're a paparazzi at, at the some sort of music awards or something because you can barely see anything and you're just trying to get in to have a look and then then when you do get in to have a look it's like you're looking at something small over there you're like, yeah i don't know and I'm it's, not, and, I'm and, so much. <laughs> there's that and then also just you know it, it's interesting because like when there's more people and more energy sometimes it's like i i wasn't coming up with like what do I really want to know or understand? And if it's more relaxed, less people around, it's like more comfortable to, to really just kind of mess up, have the questions and, and have real conversation during the time. So yes. that yes. was, that was meaningful for me. And also to, you know, another thing about it, it's like, there are some courses where it's like, cool, come and look at all of this technologies and the microscopes and this and that. And it's like, if that's cool, I love it. It's good Mm -hmm. so that everyone can know there's a microscope, but if you're not going to have a microscope in your office, I don't want you learning through the microscope. I want you learning with what you're going to have so that you are more likely set up. And and that was also the the thought of like, if it's one-on-one or small, Mm -hmm. and I think my, I don't know if my resources are down. I just got a message of that. You're more likely to do it later. I've, I've gone to other courses, like extraction courses on a pig jaw, which is great. But then it's like, it's not quite the same as, uh, you know, doing it, you know, in your office with your stuff and setting up, even, even going to like kind of getting your, getting your room set up, you know, so where you're going to, are you going to have a little endo card or we get it, have you ready to go so that that's not an excuse. Like, cause if you don't have it ready to go, sometimes you're not going to do it. No, I'm absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's, um, completely true and i've perhaps made that mistake with a microscope because i do a hands-on course and we have the microscope and um you know you gotta you gotta play your audience and if the person's not gonna have a microscope in there it's like well you know you really need to to help them so they can work back in their office the way they are and you know get get a get um and working not with the, uh, not there's anything and wrong with exactly not anything wrong yeah. with the microscope because it's good to be able to see because this is yeah. like like the microscope has its place because being mm-hmm. able to see it's like this is what you're missing so it's like it just gives you that that breadth of of like oh I really do have to look for this thing because if you're yeah. if you're going non loops and that's another thing I also encourage like 
you know, when we do our pre-talks, like you really, we should talk about getting some kind of magnification into your game if you're not using it because yes. Jamando without magnification is, is eh, you know. I for one would have hated to have been an endodontist in the seventies. Like, <laughs> first of all, I would have been really young and people would have been, what the hell? <laughs> but the other thing is everything would have been, yeah, yeah. Everything would have been dark and you're looking for like some, yeah. you know, like, three blind mice you wouldn't be able to find anything in there you'd be like oh poke 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 it's so much nicer now so and, and when you have that in your microscope 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 i guess the end of the world is a bit sometimes um a bit microscope mad and i i i can see some john's ass going like enough for the microscope i'm i got really good loops and i got good light so yes magnification illumination definitely that's good and, and you do coaching as well right Yes, I also do some executive leadership type coaching as well. Yeah, I I, I, I do not take a straight path to anything. <laughs> I definitely, <laughs> I've had a meandering uh, professional path. So yeah, and is it is it mainly dentists or just because that is the people I know? But actually, yeah. I also have uh, it's been across the board. I, I've had some clients that are scientists, like a higher level staff scientists, uh, mm -hmm. as well as in pharmacy, business, engineers. So it really, it just, it, it kind of runs the gamut. But again, because of my network has been dentist, a lot of dentists, dentist. that, that has probably been the, the greater majority of my clients have been in the dental yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, so you, you've actually talked to normal people too, not just. It dentists. has been fun. That actually <laughs> was an amazing thing. And it, and it got me really good with the Zoom thing. I, again, uh, you know, getting ready for social isolation. Um, a lot of the trainings and and just meeting the people have been over the computer so it's been yeah yeah and how's it been um in the midst of your office build i gotta ask yeah With all this falling down i mean oh my goodness if you didn't have um bad luck you'd have no luck uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was something it was it was yeah. something for sure uh yeah I finally make a decision on uh and opening something and and the pandemic strikes but again um this is not forever so it definitely puts a little uh, puts a little dent in the mm -hmm. in the future in uh, that I had created for what it would be to open and how smooth it would go but mm -hmm. it's never like we can only ever plan and mm -hmm. nothing ever goes exactly as planned so it's all mm -hmm. about you know, just um, pivoting. Yes. <laughs> then it's been the big uh, pivot for everyone, just like everyone's trying to get their PPE or trying to, you know, do the infection control, even if you're in practice already and you're doing that. So um, I would say some of the stuff that's been just interesting is getting how um, dealing with um, nothing has been on a really quick timeline with this. Everything has just been bumped a bit with, with everything shut down, I'd say. Yeah, so if there was no coronavirus and everything had gone to plan, you had been open uh, for a couple months now? Maybe not a couple of months because I think I was a little over um, optimistic about how long it takes to do things yeah. anyway. I think I, I, I had a plan in my mind like we can just, you know, be open in, in a week. But uh, so probably really, I would be open already. I would say definitely. I definitely okay. Would, but um, probably not for very long at this point, but definitely rolling. Yeah. I have a funny story when I when I was opening my office. It's always that um, when do you tell the world, and and when do you not tell the world? You don't want to tell them too soon, but you don't want to tell them too late. So we're getting close. It was like the tenth hour, and I was like, okay, I'm I'm ready to to tell everyone in 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 town that I'm opening up. So I I told everyone, of course. Um, then the contractor finds another reason to delay opening or or something, I can't remember, it was a few years ago now, but it was delayed. So I was like, I thought it would be open like two weeks ago. And it's like, no, I'm not. And and sure enough, this office calls and it was like a Friday afternoon and we had this emergency patient. And of course, long weekend, can you see him? I'm like, oh, my, I'd love to, but my clinic's not open. Oh, the guy's really in pain. So I ended up going to the guy's office. Cause I'm, that's, yeah. And that's I ended up perfect. doing the root canal there. And the guy left and like, he's like, okay, well, I'm having a long weekend. So I worked with his staff in his office. Didn't know, like, and it's like, you're, you're cooking in someone else's kitchen. You've never even been in. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, it, it all, I, I, it was like a lower um, canine or something. Couldn't get the person frozen. And, you know, so then you're worried it's going to all act up and it was calcified and, you know, this, you know, so I managed to find it, but it took me so long 
um, because I have oh, no microscope either. So you're like, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> so anyway, I find it, medicate it. Okay, um, uh, we'll just call you um, when the office is open. And um, so sure enough, the office opened. And of course, I remember this guy. So we call the office and the office manager's like, oh, as soon as it, like you call someone and they're like, oh, oh. you're like, oh yeah, here we oh, go. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really have to, pause. basically the, the patient came back and the guy finished it. Oh, you know, okay. Because I had it to length and size and all yeah. noted. So it's like, oh, thank you very much. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and they're like, oh, do you want to do it? And I hadn't billed or anything. Because like, what are you trying? You know, and I said, no, no, don't worry about it. We'll just figure it out when the guy comes back. So I mean, I, uh, I don't, don't worry about it. You know, blah, blah, blah. I just build it up to experience. Oh, thank you so much. Right. Because they were expecting that, you know, oh, maybe yeah. give me a few bucks or something. Anyway, I own that office. I own that office just because of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. It was on, honestly, so there's special there. People on referrals. That was, you know, super fantastic. Worked out well for me. Um, as long as that office manager was there. Cause she, you know, I guess she felt a bit in the hot seat, the hot seat. She was between two, two dueling dentists. Right. Yeah. Um, and she was at that office for about 10 years and then left. And you're like, damn, <laughs> I miss you. Because <laughs> that, that, no one else at that office knew me other than her, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in, 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 interesting uh, case. So uh, yeah, you might be getting a call like that. <laughs> I actually, that had already crossed my brain because I'm like, I, uh, I know, you know, like once you start working with contractors and different things, things don't ever go according to plan. And that's been the biggest thing of like, when do you say it's time? I, and so I'm like, if I need to go to, but you know, with this coronavirus thing, um, I was like, is that good? I mean, it's, it's a little interesting going into someone else's office with their, with the protocols and everything too. Like, oh, right. uh, so that I, I, that had actually crossed my brain beforehand. And now I'm like, well, that's, that's an interesting, it's interesting. How would that play out? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm absolutely. Yeah. It's uh it's a little bit of a different world right now. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, so this is a super fantastic, interesting case. And any more pearls of wisdom you have to share about this case with us? Uh, it's a fantastic no. result. I mean, it's healed so nicely in that in six months. That's that's really that's six months, right? I think that was about a year. So I think a that year. was about a year. Yeah. yeah. And, and it healed up. It healed up real nice. And again, young, young. Uh, I love mm -hmm. young people often heal real nice. And mm -hmm. um, I had actually done another case on him. Like, I think it was a number seven, really large. We, he healed really, he was just a really good healer as well. Mm -hmm. So um, other pearls of wisdom, it really comes down to diagnosis, honestly. Like mm -hmm. I really, it's so foundational that I, I think that um, just, you know, if you're hesitant on doing the testing, just, reach out to someone, <laughs> you know, if you need some guidance on, on, on just doing efficient diagnostic endodontic testing, because it doesn't actually have to impede your flow so much to do that. And it can make a, you know, it can make a difference. I don't know if he had had a lesion, you know, back in April. I don't know. Like, so that's always the thing of like when, you know, for prognosis, it's always better if you can catch things earlier. So mm -hmm. I, that's, that's why I'm so pro testing. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, the, the thing too with testing is, is if they have a lesion, still test. Yeah, because it, because it's it's not always a lesion of endodontic origin. You know, yeah. that, I, how many times have we seen that? So yeah, and also, um, like, so let's say this guy came in right and he had pain, mm -hmm. um, and 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 this was his X-ray. I would cold test the root canal treated tooth, not because I think there's a nerve in there going to respond to cold. I know a lot of people say that MB2 will respond to cold, but I've yet to come across that in my life, but I will have a patient respond to cold on a root canal treated tooth. And I don't turn around and say, okay, you're an idiot. You're screwing all my test results, but you're like, oh, okay, okay. Cause they'll do that. Sometimes people are so motivated to have treatment yeah. that they got a hair trigger. They're like, yeah, I felt that. Oh, that was cool. Ah, okay. Don't worry. You are getting treatment today. I'm going to take care of you. We are going to do something, but, but if you don't feel it, that's important too. And, yeah. and uh, this one, I think, you know, maybe it's, it's just me pressing and, and, and you'll be surprised um, talking to the audience that uh, you'll be surprised how many root canal treated teeth you put cold on when you're initially doing the testing and the person says, I feel that 
and it's and sometimes it's, it's just the cold in their mouth it's the pop crackle you know that they're hearing or something like that and they're, and they're so motivated for treating like yeah i feel cold oh yeah that's and you're like oh, hang on a minute and then you can recalibrate yourself and then and then once you kind of work that out with a patient all your other test results are a little more accurate because sometimes their motivation for treatment or their anxiety or this skews your results yeah. and and you get those things and I'm speaking and some of them experience. just want to be right sometimes yeah. they just actually want to give you the right answer that's another thing too it's like yes. they'll be, and and it's interesting because they just want to they just want to help you, you. they yeah. want exactly I, and it's that that's interesting it's like really there's there's no right or wrong I just it's just, it's just information you know yeah 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 and if they're sitting there like hmm yeah I did feel that no 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 yeah. Yes or and no. And sometimes like, I actually do the <laughs> testing where I don't put the cold. I'm, I'm sure yeah. you do, where I don't even yeah. put the cold on the tooth. Like I'll make it so yeah. that they'll think that I'm doing something, and and then if they start yeah. answering, then it's like, okay, we gotta. Yeah, yeah. I know. And the thing is with pulp testing is I'm better at it this year than I was last year, and I'm hopefully gonna be better at it next year. Yeah. And it it is a learned art, and 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 you get better at it. And, up here, um, we can get our um, staff, our assistants, to do the pulp testing. It's, it's something they can do. And they're getting better at it, too. And then I come in and double check. But if, 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 and some people, like, I like to do what I'm legally obliged to do and nothing more. <laughs> yeah. But, but your staff will, if you have the right staff, they find that quite interesting. Because they can then solve the problem and us sitting, not sitting back and waiting, okay, well, it's cold sensitive. All right. Wait till the big guy comes in and let's see if. You know, he, the wizard can figure it out. It's like, no, 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 actually they yeah. can. And, and then they take pride in it and it's, you'll find that they're, they're, they're more enthused about their job. And I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I was actually going to say that as, as well, like train your staff to do that because it, it, and depending on where you're on, I mean, I know every state and, you know, territory mm -hmm. can be, can be different, but that have, you know, empower your team, you know, like it, it, it won't take more time for you if they're doing that as part of the setup, you know? Yes. They're doing that as part of a setup for a crown even. Like I said, you know, doing that foundational testing before a crown. If that's just part of the setup ahead of time so that when you walk in, it's prepped and they can just tell you this responded, this didn't, you know, that mm -hmm. doesn't take any more time out of your, you know, your flow. Yes. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's really good. It gives you useful information. Um, also gives you perspective on the patient's pain tolerances and different things like that. And 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 when you're training your staff, I would, I always give them a get out of jail free card because if if at first when they're first doing it, they're going to be a little heavy handed with a cold sometimes. Some people will take offense to their testing, and it's yeah. like you get any EBGBs from a patient, stop. I'll come in and do yeah. it, and and after a while, they get so good that only the real jerks <laughs> kick up a fuss. <laughs> and they would have given you a fuss as well. Yeah, they would a hard time anyway. I don't know if you do this, but this is what I do with my, with the team members I work with. I do the testing on them. I do, I put them in the chair for almost everything. Cause I'm like, I want you to experience what they're uh, going to experience. So I'm going to do this cold testing on you because then you know, like this is not necessarily a fun test. And also like, I mean, I'll even do that with the light. Like, cause you know, sometimes light will be shown into the patient's yeah. eyes. Yeah. I'm like, get in the chair. I'm like, do you like this? Like, um, uh -huh. there's a way to do the light. Cause I don't, I don't like it. And people are scared and we want to make them as comfortable. And it's not, it's not mean doing it. It's like we do it in all fun. Like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, it's just, uh, ask knowledge. me about the raise again. Ask me about that raise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you like oh, it? Again? <laughs> <laughs> You're blinding me. I'm like, exactly. This is why we want to have the light in a different direction. We don't want to blind people. This is why yeah. we don't want to be heavy handed with the cold test thing. Cause it's, I have super sensitive teeth. So I'm, I, and very mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. with my cold testing. Ah, uh, there you <laughs> go. Yeah. Yeah, I had uh, gum surgery and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be very gentle with the needle. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I know. Once you have that perspective, that's, that's it. That palate hurts. Uh, well, this has been absolutely super fantastic, Paula. It was lovely chatting. I, I hope other people found it as entertaining as, as we did. <laughs> <laughs> as well, yes. I sure do hope so. <laughs>